My family comes uh, from Iraq and when we came to Germany uh, I was five years old and uh, we came to Germany because of the war, because it was just not safe anymore for us. I didn't understand where we were going, they didn't tell me anything because of the police. Um, it was just too dangerous. When we came to Germany, there were no um, help organizations for refugees. They just put me in the kindergarten. And I was really afraid because I was um, desperate for my family. I was with people, I didn't understand their language and I didn't know where I was. Um, so I went to the school without knowing any German word, without um, anything about the system, how is it working. I didn't understand anything, but I was stubborn. I learned German because I read many, many German books. I watched a lot of German TV and by time I learned to speak German. My grades became better because the only um, thing that uh, made my grades bad was my language. I was fully integrated in my class with my school. I had friends, they came over to us, to our house. I went over to them, it was just everything perfect and then we had to move. We moved to Stuttgart and everything changed. 2014 and 2015 we had, uh, we received many uh, immigrants uh, to Germany and I was engaging with many of those uh, young immigrants and, uh, and we came to a problem. Many of those young immigrants, after they get the asylum um, uh, seeker uh, status and they officially live in the country, they were facing a problem uh, to get a flat, to get a place to, to live. We came together in the village where I live, Krontal, with some people who are voluntarily and we said, well, what could we do for those young people? And many of those young people, when they come under age, the government take care of them, of everything. And when they become 18, they just leave them out. So that's why we said, well, what could we do to take care of those uh, young people who are over 18? Yeah? And then we came very, very quick with the idea of renting a flat with many uh, rooms inside. We started in 2016 mainly with uh, people from Syria and Afghanistan. Um, then in 2018, it switched to Af African countries. Our first aim, and also my first aim was that um, we uh, rent them a home. Um, they all of them come from, uh, from cultures where family is a big thing. And so our, our aim is to, to be a kind of German family for them. And at the moment we have 14 places to live here. We plan for them for the first year that they uh, um, feel well with us, that they uh, uh, learn how, where they are, they learn the language very well and in the second year we uh, develop with them a plan for their life so that they find out what they could do in their future in Germany and then we look after a, a job for them and so they start their future with us and then they leave and uh, um, go on in their lives. And through that those young people who started to learn the ethics of working in Germany, because it's also a culture for itself. And we thought if in the future they will have to work somewhere, they need to start somehow. We looked for a place around our area and we called those people, can they come and make an internship? You know, just to work. And you know, all of our young people who went and did this internship, car mechanic or a carpenter or at the university, all of them succeeded. So the project that we have is not only something that is helping the immigrants, it's also helping the society. To show the society integration can work. It is a hard work, but it is not impossible. 
I think at first they have to settle down and that means that they also can deal with their past. Most of them really suffered sorrow in their past. We once said that there was a, a boat, there was a boat which went first before we go. They didn't they did make it. So people had the news that their boat was collapsed in the river. And people start crying because you never know what is the, what's next for you. They push us in the night. So we enter in the river. We just go just like how many kilometers like we enter in the Mediterranean Sea. So we like we spend like almost a day in the sea. So the, so we enter there was a the boat, it was, I think it was from, so it was from Scotland, I think. So they take us to Italy. They speak about uh, horrible uh, moments. For example, one told me that he, that he sat in the boat on the Mediterranean with other people around him sitting and a uh, um, dark night and uh, people uh, sitting next to him fell down in the water and did not, uh, um, he didn't see them again. And he uh, cannot forget that. Another one told me that he had to um, go through the desert for one week and the, he went by um, in a caravan, which got, uh, uh, went very fast. I did not know that, that the, they go so fast and they had to sit and uh, hold themselves close so that he, they do, did not fall around, uh, down. But, uh, this is the main problem, that they faced death that intensively that they cannot forget it. And they uh, tell us if they get quiet, if they get alone, they start thinking about those experiences and cannot forget them. So the day I was going, it was I was very lucky because the the train stopped there, but the police don't enter the the, pla uh, the place I was. They enter the front, but they don't enter the back side. And I was in the back side. I said, oh, maybe today's my day. So they go out, then the the train gone. So I go until Lugano. I have to change train now, Lugano, to go to Basel. There was a train from Basel going to Freiburg. I enter in the train, I enter, the time I enter in the train, I go to the toilet. So I was trying to observe. So the train go to until Freiburg. I know now we are in Germany now. So I go out from the toilet, then I sit. So from Freiburg, I think I go to until, from Freiburg, I come to Stuttgart. So I was there then, for the meantime, I sleep there just like one day. Now they take my fingerprint, they take my name and other stuff. They take my height. I will stay in Sigmaringen. I stayed there for almost eight months. People were trying to help me, but I don't have the opportunity to go to school. So I, I cannot speak the language. So one of my friends told me, I told him, there is Quan House. He told me this place. Like, you know, they help people for interrogate. So you have to. They take you to school, you have to learn the language and other stuff. I said, yeah, it's okay. That is one, my, one of my friends, her name is Loom. I thought, okay, that's a good idea then. Then I have to try it. So I come here, I switch with Monica and Stefan and Mahia. So they explain me the rules and the regulation of the house here, what to do and other stuff. They told me, okay, here, if you come here, it's like, it's like a train, we can help you, for you to go further. I saw the, the increase of immigration in, in my school and uh, also around other schools. Our main issue of immigration is uh, that the children has to learn the German language um, as fast as possible. Yeah? And I think this is uh, the, the key, uh, in my opinion. So integration is not assimilation, but also is not a parallel structure. So what is integration? For me as an immigrant, integration means for me to find my place in the society. I need someone to tell me two things. To tell me what are my duties as a citizen in Germany and what are my rights. And I can only demand my rights when I fulfill my duties. I'm very skeptic about the way that the German government have been dealing with the issue of integration. If you see these integration courses, they teach us uh, the language, which is good, you know, but we need to tackle the issue of culture. To be honest, 
I never experienced discrimination from any German people. No direct discrimination. I experienced discrimination from my own uh, people, from people from Middle East, because they are Muslims and didn't understand how somebody who is from the Middle East could be Christian. So my whole um, life in school, I was bullied because I was a Christian from Middle East, from people that all were from Middle East. So Germans, I think, don't really discriminate refugees. If they see that they are really willing to live here in Germany, that they are respecting the law here in Germany, trying to find the workplace or try to accept the religion here in Germany. Some nationalities have it easier to integrate here in Germany uh, because their mindset is a little bit um, like this of the Germans. But people from the Middle East, they have a complete, completely different mindset and that makes it um, a little bit difficult to integrate here. And there's another point, Christian Middle Eastern people uh, are nearly to the mindset of the Germans than Muslim Middle Eastern people. The religion makes the whole mindset of these people. I'm a Muslim. Our parents like the way they teach us, no matter what, you have to, if you are a Muslim, you have to concentrate in your, in your region. You have to play five, day, five times in a day. So, I don't know how to say it, but you, your region, it must be the number one priority before anything else. We know about that, but like, like I said, our region is our number one priority. The next, the rest, you know what to do, but you have to respect your region no matter what. That's the way they teach us. That's the way we grow. Many people, or the government especially, they underestimate the role of religion. We come with a total different set of, set of beliefs, value system, and a culture. And the people that they think integration will happen is just a matter of time. Those people are misleading themselves and misleading the whole society. It is irresponsible. You know, just to open the countries and to say, you are welcome. Like in our Arabic language, when you say welcome, the word welcome, there are two words. It is ahlan wa sahlan. The first phrase ahlan means a family. And sahlan, this means like where the animals eat the grass. So like in the nomadic, a nomadic um, uh, setup, all what you need, you need a family, and you need a place where your animal would eat grass. So that when we come, we say, Ahlan wa Sahlan, we understand, oh, you know, we are part of that and you have to provide for us. And then when you say to me, you are welcome, you're not only welcoming me, you're welcoming my family, my friends, and then I bring everybody home. So this is the first misconception. So it is totally irresponsible to say, you come, but you're not telling me you know, what is awaiting for me. So you cannot say to me, well, welcome, and then later on, you know, I, you will be surprised. I think um, for the refugees, um, our values, um, for example, honesty, for example, um, re reli reliability, or um, also living in a, in a democracy, um, these kind of values, are, 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 I think, are important for them also to accept and, and to live in. And also, um, most of the refugees, they come from a very formative culture. They grew, grew up in a culture, for example, where uh, women haven't got the same value as men. Their encounter with female persons in Germany or in, in Saatkorn project is um, always uh, our first encounter f between them and me. I, I run the daily life in Saatkorn Project and I am the person who decides at the end can, can he join us or not. And uh, so, and, and we had a trick, our Arabian uh, staff member uh, always uh, calls me chief. 
He doesn't uh, call my name, but he always calls me chief. And uh, all of them hear that and they, uh, they um, do it the same way. And so they learn that all, also a woman can be the chief. We um, spoke with them about difference between West and their home countries, how uh, women are dealt with. And uh, I asked them if they think about uh, um, having a German girl girlfriend. And all of them said, yes, of course, then we can stay here if we uh, marry a German woman. Uh, and then I asked, um, can, can you think about um, beating her if she doesn't uh, uh, um, follow your words? And all of them said, yes, of course. And then I said to them, so please be, um, please uh, think about that she will beat back you. It is very important to see that, you know, you cannot resolve conflicts by violence. The second thing that we need to know, equality, that men and women, they have the same dignity. You find a woman walking on the street in the midst of the night and nobody's accompanying her, but they take advantage of that. That's why women get attacked. We need also to know that the European countries are governed by law. You know, in our countries, we're governed by tribes, we're governed by clans, we're governed by religion, we're governed by so many things. So like in, in Sudan, for instance, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are doing. It always matters where you come from. So you come from a bigger family, influential family, you know, you will be automatically above the law. We should know before we come to Europe, everybody is under the law. The politicians, everybody is under the law. The, the European society is a society that built on truth. And sometimes when people tell us the truth directly in our face, we get offended, you know, because we come from a shame-oriented culture, you know, where you don't confront people, where you don't name things by name, you know. In our culture, we say often yes, but we mean no, because we come from a shame-oriented culture where honor plays a very, 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 very big role. And so many of the immigrants, they got shocked because they cannot control, control their girls when they're 18 years old. You know, they cannot just chain them at home. You know, and then they think, oh, they're bringing a lots of uh, shame to us. Well, as uh, Western people, um, you're seeing the good in Middle Eastern refugees because it's your way of thinking. You think um, these poor people, they come to Germany because of war, because um, of anything else and um, they need help. So we need to integrate them, we need to help them, we need to support them. And it's very beautiful thinking. I totally um, agree and support this, this thinking. But Western people need to know that Middle Eastern people, um, especially Muslims, don't think very good about Western people. They will smile in your face and behind your back they will talk about you. That's just the mentality. I think the role of religion is a big issue in immigration um, problems. Sometimes they want to stay with their uh, in their Islamic uh, background. And uh, the, the problem is, I think, so then that um, maybe um, so we get so, uh, a so second culture, second cultural uh, society. And this, I think this uh, brings us uh, problems. Sometimes I think it can be an obstacle to integrate because um, the Islamic culture is uh, so, it's such a different culture to our, uh, to our society, to our Christian um, society. So um, sometimes I think religion is an obstacle to immigrate. Europe is actually emerged out of this Judeo-Christian faith. And this is what people on the right, they need to understand to act only out of fear is not going to help us. 
our message will be to the Muslims, you know, that our picture of a God, and this God is love. We believe in a God that who does not need people to defend him. And we believe in a God that he will not send anybody to kill anyone. We um, recognize that they uh, take their religion much um, more serious than we Germans. Um, and so we start talking about this with them right from the beginning. We tell them uh, um, Zadkon is built up on the Christian values and uh, this is our um, measure. And they have to accept that and if they can't do that, they should better not come. But when they are here, we see they, uh, they, we have Hindus, we have Muslims from the different groups, Muslim groups, and we tell them always uh, in our uh, buildings there will be no war. We speak about conflicts, we, we sit together and we uh, disc discuss it and find solutions so that everybody can live with it. They can um, um, live their religion and we together build a new culture, kind of, um, mixed up with, with elements from their cultures and from, uh, of course mainly a German culture because they live here now. And for me it's important that they uh, can live in, in between Germany and uh, feel well there, but also do not forget their, the values of their own culture. Um, and so that they can, uh, we want them to, to build up a new identity. One normal question is, they ask us is, why do you do all that for us? And we, our only answer is, because God loves us, we love you and want that your lives will uh, uh, become good. And uh, this is very impressive for them, because we have no, we don't earn money uh, through this, this work and they, they begin to see the difference between uh, the Muslim religion and the Christian religion. Sometimes I think the uh, government should <laughs> go the same way uh, and uh, plant Zarkon in it, each town <laughs> so that um, much more refugees could be helped that way because at the end they are more useful as, as uh, German citizens <laughs> and their lives could become much more stable. So like in many of those integration courses, you learn actually only the theoretical lessons. Many foreigners sit in these integration courses, not because they want. They sit there because if they don't do that, their social system is not going to give them money. So it is very easy to sit there 600 hours, you know, every day, and I mean, this does not mean that I learn anything. And that's why I'm proposing that we need to have a practical side of it. And this practical side of it, uh, I spell it this way. We should get engaged in voluntary work. This means if I go to the language school in the morning, yeah, and in the evening in my village, I will volunteer, say like in an elderly home, you know, serve elderly home people. There I would, practice my language in a better way. It will be totally wrong of us to see the immigration issue only as a problem. You know, there is a lots of good side of it. We need to speak about that thing because there are so many people in Europe who are very naive. Yeah, my future is that uh, I want to stay here. So like make house building, like work in a restaurant, you know, or baker. Baker is to make bread and other stuff. But since now I have more experience making noodles like this other stuff because now I'm long here now. So I prefer to make, to do restaurant, I prefer to work in a restaurant, maybe to make noodles or to make other stuff. So that's what I want. So I want to be here my future. It depends. They allow me to stay here. So that's what I want now. It's very important for you to go to school, for you to communicate with people. If you're going to communicate with people, you cannot go. So you have to speak the language. You should never underestimate the power of language. Because if you don't uh, speak the language of the country you're in, you don't have the chance to integrate. Because you cannot communicate with people. You cannot work anywhere. You cannot uh, go shopping without uh, speaking the language. So the language is the most important thing if you want to integrate or immigrate to any country. So these people also 
encouraged me for those stuff, you know. They told me you have to you have to force, you have to go to school and you have to pass. Because since I passed, they told me, okay, you are very good. So if you go further, then you can you can have more in the better futures.